I built a beautiful garden for a very low cost. In the summer, this garden is absolutely incredible, not just by the way it looks, but also by the way it produces food for me and my family. It's full of life and an absolute pleasure to spend time in. We use diversity and intense planting methods in most of our garden. We allow all kinds of crops to grow with one another. We don't separate things very often. The crops grow on raised beds, in the ground, teepee trellises, arch trellises, rope, and wired fencing. And as a result, we have a huge harvest that we enjoy all year long. And since it's not the growing season and we don't have snow yet, this is a really good time to show you the infrastructure and how cheaply you can build and design a garden in your area. When I'm talking about building a garden or designing it, I'm talking about the infrastructure, the things that make your garden what it is, the design. And I have three things that I'm gonna share with you that I did have to purchase for this garden. The first purchase I wanna talk about are these raised beds right here. All of the lumber to make these beds and these three little beds over here that you can see cost me around $100. So these are cedar planks made for fencing, so fence pickets basically. So each section is six feet long and there's three sections. So a six foot long fence picket goes up to that portion. As I zoom in, you can see how it's the top of the fence it has these dog ears on here and I connected each section either with a two by six or a two by four. This is a two by six, over there is a two by four. I just use scrap lumber for this that I have laying around from other projects. And then it's six more feet there, ending at that section, and then six more feet ending at this section over here. If you go up to eight foot sections instead of six, the price almost doubles I found where I purchased these from. So I just decided to go with six plus six plus six, 18, which works well. Then over here on the end, I just did a four foot section. And then because I didn't use the entire fence picket, we cut off the end and I used this at the end of all of these raised beds, as you can see on that section and that section over there. On the ends here, I have them secured and put together with two by fours. And not all of these two by fours, but a lot of these two by fours right here are actually dug in the ground 12 inches below the raised bed way down there. And the reason why I did that is so that it keeps it from bowing out. This is not strong lumber, this is not strong wood. It's very thin, it bends, it moves around, it can warp. But with that in the ground, these two by fours over there in the ground 12 inches, that really does help stabilize the raised bed. I do have a board underneath connecting this two by six with that two by four, about six inches below the soil going that way. And I believe I put another one over here going that way. So for that raised bed, this one, and this raised bed, they're all four by 18. You can actually see the board here because the soil has settled. That's what I did. The next item that I purchased that cost quite a bit of money are these cattle panel trellises. These are really nice to have and they're great for trellising things. Each one costs $25, so a total of 75 when you combine all three of them. The third and final item I'd like to talk to you about are these T-posts. We purchased these for about $5 a piece and there's six of them, which is $30, which puts us over our budget. But to tell you the truth, I don't even know how many of these we actually purchased. I'm pretty sure some came with the property and some were used from other projects years ago. We've had these for a really long time and I cannot remember which ones we actually purchased. All they do is secure this cattle panel trellis from coming out and flipping out that way. It just basically makes it into a U shape and holds it there. But you wouldn't need to use these if you don't want to. You could use some kind of tree limb like this and just dig it into the ground. All of the other items I'm going to show you next were free. The first item I wanna to talk to you about are these tree limbs. These are teepee trellises that we grew a ton of food on last year. It was absolutely amazing. All I do is when I cut up firewood or trees fall from a storm or over the winter, I'm doing spring cleanup, I go out and I cut six foot lengths of these, these limbs right here. And these limbs are just trees that we have around the property. Now, I get a lot of people saying, well, we don't have trees on our property. We live in town. I'm sure you know somebody that has trees either in town that they're cutting up. You can look on Facebook. Sometimes people are saying a tree fell in our yard. Um, whoever wants to take the tree away can have the firewood and whatever, you can come and take it, you can claim it. You just have to think outside the box a little bit. Don't limit yourself with that mindset of you can't get things for free from the woods because you live in town. A lot of public land allows you to take firewood for free with a permit. 
just call, figure it out. And you probably know somebody who lives in the country who has trees or has woods that you can go in and just pick these up off the ground. You can walk through my woods right now and probably find a hundred limbs like this laying on the ground. Now they wouldn't be sawed off. They wouldn't be exactly six feet, but take a little bow saw, cut it off, and there you go. These are all free. So the next item I'd like to talk to you about is this log border. Now it doesn't look great being in the winter right now, but in the summer we've got nice green grass over here. You've got wood chips and plants growing. It's, it actually looks really nice. It kind of cleans up the garden a little bit. This entire garden has a log border around the entire thing. And all that this is are smaller trees that fall or larger tree limbs that I simply cut. I square off the ends a little bit and I have a meet up and it kind of keeps a clean edge on the garden. You can spend a lot of money doing this. You can spend a ton of money getting lumber, whether that's treated or not, and lining your entire garden. And I don't only use it on the exterior of the garden, I also use it on the inside to separate things. For example, sometimes I like to grow plants and things right here next to this walking path, and I want to separate it from whatever else I'm doing over there. So this log border and all these limbs and trees right here came from my property. This is where I do the Florida weave with our tomatoes. We do Romo tomatoes in here, Florida weave style. And then right here is another log border that separates the tomatoes from whatever I happen to be growing. And in this case, this is where I grow in the ground right here. The next item I'd like to show you is our soil or compost. You can get soil for free by making it for free. I have an entire video. This is what the thumbnail looks like. This is the link you can click at the top of your screen if you're on a cell phone or something to watch after this. I highly recommend watching that video. I'll also put it down in the description. But these raised beds here, whether it's this fire ring or over there or back over there, most of that is filled with free compost that we get that our chickens make in the run back over here. The next item I'd like to share with you are the wood chips. We do not use wood chips around our plants, even though you could. We use leaf mulch for that. However, the wood chips are a large part of our garden infrastructure and design because we place them every place we walk with the exception of our walking path in the middle that I'll get to in a little bit. But right now I'm standing on wood chips that I got for free and you can get free wood chips too. This is also another thing I get questions on. How do you get free wood chips? Well, we get them from our city depository. A city depository is simply a place where maybe after Christmas time you put your tree out if you live in town and the city comes along and collects it. It's a place where you put your bags of leaves. They have to put that somewhere. They have to put that in a place where they can recycle it and do whatever they gotta do with it. But a lot of times these places also have wood chips because the county or the city goes around and cuts down trees that cause problems on roads and buildings and they chip up all the wood and they have a huge pile of it. So I would highly recommend calling your city depository or at least going there. That's what I did. I literally just drove there one day. I said, hey, I'm looking for free wood chips. I don't need anything else, just wood chips. I'll load them myself. I put loads of wood chips into my truck with a tarp, pull it out when I get home and spread it all over the garden wherever you want them. But that's a free resource for you. I would highly recommend looking into that if I were you. The next item I want to talk to you about is cardboard. We love cardboard, especially the big large panels of cardboard that's really thick. This entire garden has cardboard underneath it. It could be under the raised beds, it can be under the pavers, it can be under the wood chips, but the entire thing has cardboard and that is super helpful for suppressing weeds. So this is the type of cardboard I'm talking about. What we do is we place it on the ground and then we place our wood chips, soil, whatever we're doing on top of it. We plan on expanding our garden another 20 feet or so this side of the chicken run. You can get cardboard pretty much anywhere. The best place in my opinion is the post office because they have huge pieces of cardboard and a lot of times they're not even glued together, they're opened up and they don't have tape on them. Ask them if they have free cardboard. When I went there and picked it up, they had stacks and stacks taller than me of the cardboard and they come in huge sections of like six feet by six feet. That way you don't have to waste your time with these little tiny cardboard boxes you might get somewhere else. You can cover a lot of area in a small amount of time with the large cardboard from the post office. The next item are all these cement pavers right here. These were given to us for free because some friends of ours were redoing their patio behind their house and they didn't want these old ones anymore, so we took them. This is a really nice way to divide the garden. I mentioned that it's 40 feet wide this way and this is right at the 20 foot mark which divides our garden from the raised beds over there to everything else that we're doing on this side of the garden. It's a nice even split in the middle 
and it makes it really nice to walk on and easy to walk on for just about anybody. There are lots of people that redo their landscaping and are looking to get rid of stuff like this. They don't want to have to recycle it, pay for dump fees and all of that stuff. So they're happy to give it away to people willing to put in a little elbow grease and grab it. It's very heavy. You need a pickup truck or a trailer to get it. But with one or two trips, you can have all the pavers you need if you want to use those in your garden space. So the next free item I want to talk about are these limb posts. We talked about how you can use T-posts, but T-posts cost money and these don't. Limbs are free. Just like the teepee trellises, a lot of the posts that are in my garden are made out of just tree limbs that I find in the woods. I square them off. I make sure the appropriate length, put them in the ground with a pull stole digger, bury the dirt around it, and it holds things up. These ones in particular over here, there's three of them. These hold up where we plant our peas every year up this wire fencing. So there's three over here that hold up this fencing. We use one in the middle right there, that T post right there, and that T post right there. Those came on the property. I think the previous owner had birdhouses on them. So those are free. And the T posts over here, what we do is we put twine and we weave it around and we let certain plants grow up it. It kind of changes every year. Then back by the chickens over here, we also use them to hold up this chicken fencing back here. It's not chicken fencing, but you know what I mean. And we use them all over the place, even back by the gate over there. It seems to work just fine. That's a free resource for you if you look into it, and especially if you have a property where you've got some trees. This fire ring was a free resource from us, and I'm not saying you need to find a fire ring, but you can find things that you can put vegetables or fruit or your crops in. What do I mean by that? There are raised beds that are free but they're not raised beds. They had a different function. This is an old culvert. This was left here on the property by the previous owners. They use this as a fire pit, which obviously you can do, or you can use it to grow things, and that's what we decided to do. The last growing season, we decided to grow our sweet potatoes here in one of those tripod grills that you put over a fire. Well, we never use it for that, so we just decided to use it for growing up our sweet potato vines. And when our sweet potato vines grew up that tripod, it not only looked cool, but it kept them off the ground where you're not stepping on them. This is the perfect size for growing some sweet potatoes, and it was a really nice feature in the garden. The next item that we use a lot of in the garden that you probably will not see very much are these rocks. These rocks here actually level out this raised bed and all the other ones. What it does is it keeps it level instead of me having to go through and labor and level out the entire ground where this goes i just prop up some rocks underneath this it's also going to help this from not rotting this pvc cold frame is probably the most difficult thing to find for free we were lucky where friends gave it to us for free they just didn't need it however you can probably look online i'm sure there's some resources there are other ways to make cold frames with hoop house configurations just look for videos that probably would suit your needs a little bit more than building this. This is super nice though because it's framed up at the side and goes up at the right angle. We put this net over here to protect the brassicas from deer. And we also use this in the spring when we do our transplants of our warm weather crops like tomatoes and peppers. And if we don't want to get those um, in the frost or have a danger of having a frost, we just put a plastic sheet over the top of this, hold it down with some rocks or some firewood on either side just for the night, and that gets them to the point where they can be a little bit more independent. There are two mistakes I see gardeners making all the time. Beginning gardeners, bad soil and bad seed selection. They get the cheapest seeds from Walmart, they use crappy soil, maybe the soil that they had in the ground, they don't try to amend it, they don't fertilize it very well, then their garden doesn't go well and then they quit gardening because it's too hard. Other than those mistakes, the other mistake I see is that people are not designing and using the right infrastructure in their garden to begin with. Not because they're spending a lot of money on stuff, that could be an issue, but they're just not thinking where things need to go as far as sun configuration, airflow, flow of the garden, where things will be planted at a certain time of year. One of the reasons why this garden works so well is because of the infrastructure. We have great soil, I only buy the best seeds if I can get my hands on them, that has a lot to do with it, but it's also because of the infrastructure. Because we trellis certain things, it helps with airflow and disease resistance. It helps us be able to prune it better. Because we use raised beds, we can eliminate a lot of the weeding. Because we put leaves and things that we have on the property, on top of the soil, we hardly even need to water the garden at all. I have an entire video on how we hardly ever weed or water this, this garden. We really don't. We do it when we need to, which is not very often. So if you're thinking of starting a garden, I would really focus on the infrastructure and gathering things that you can get for free. Things that are going to help your garden with vertical growth, like trellises, arch trellis, teepee trellises, wire fencing you can grow things up. 
rope uh, kind of fencing like we use over here where we do the ropes in between the wooden limbs. For that we just use twine. We use a lot of different features in here and the more the merry, the more diverse garden you have, the better it's going to be. This entire area behind me used to be in-ground beds only. We tilled up the whole thing, we weeded it like crazy, we watered it constantly, we were constantly bringing in fertilizers, organic fertilizers, but still, and we had an average to below average garden. But now that we're using arch trellises, raised beds with high quality soil, large raised beds with really good soil and compost, incorporating that in with our chicken system, wire fencing to grow up peas, teepee trellises for all of our bigger things that we trellis, all of that stuff has completely changed the way our garden functions. We used to have a below average garden. Now we have a nice garden that does really well for us and it didn't cost much to begin with. $200 just for the infrastructure of this garden is nothing compared to what a lot of people spend on gardening. And if you're a serious gardener, one of the reasons why you probably got into gardening other than the health benefits is to save money. People tell me a lot that they can't afford the soil in their area to fill the raised beds. They want to have raised beds, they built their raised bed, but now it just doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense to buy hundreds of dollars of soil when you can use that money to just go to the grocery store and get the food without any effort. That's a really fair point, but there's a huge mistake that people make. I've got two points, so listen up carefully. This is a really, really, really big mistake. It actually makes me really frustrated to hear these comments about soil costs. If you are a person Listen up. If you are a person that goes to big box stores or garden centers and purchases individual bags of soil to fill raised beds, you might as well throw your money away. Home Depot loves when people do this because it gives them a lot of business. Instead, you need to look for a local landscaping or gardening company that sells this kind of stuff in bulk. I've got an old trailer I bring to my local company down the road here. We're really lucky it's only four miles away. But I would say if you were within an hour of a place, having them deliver it, if you don't have a trailer or a truck or something to haul it in, you're still going to come out hundreds of dollars ahead rather than going to Home Depot and buying individual bags. Not only is that a waste, it's just time consuming and it's tedious and probably really annoying to fill up a raised bed like this. Now those garden centers don't want you to believe that filling raised beds with bags like that is a bad idea. They want you to think that's what it's for, and that's not what it's for. Those bags are for little pots for flowers, planter on your porch or something, or maybe a little herb garden you have on your back deck. That's what those are for. They're also good for purchasing those bags if you wanna do seed starting inside underneath a little greenhouse or a light before they're ready to go outside as transplants. But if you're gonna fill an entire raised bed like this, four feet by 18 feet long, with those bags. That's a horrible idea and I would not recommend it. With a little time and effort and research, all you have to do is go online to Google and see whether you've got a local place that sells this stuff in bulk. I recommend having them drop it off just to do it all at one time. But if you wanna go pick it up, shovel it in, that's the way to do it. That's what I did here. I went and picked it up with my truck and a trailer, backed it up as close to the garden as I could, started piling it in, and then I saved hundreds of dollars in the process and it didn't take much money at all to get these raised beds to where they are now. Point number two, and this is equally as important, is don't fill the entire raised bed full of soil. I'm not talking about up to the top. I'm talking about where you start at the bottom. I mentioned earlier that we use cardboard for the entire garden under where I am now in a walking path and underneath these raised beds. I've got a five layering system that I like to use on all of my raised beds. So layer number one is cardboard. Lay that down on the ground wherever you want your raised beds to go. Layer number two are logs or tree limbs that go on top of the cardboard. That's gonna take up a lot of space underneath that doesn't need to be filled with soil. Whether it's expensive or not, you don't need soil all the way down to the ground unless your raised bed is really shallow. These raised beds are only six inches deep so I didn't put any logs on there. These raised beds are much higher, so I do have logs underneath that soil right there. The logs you can use could be tree limbs like this. I have some here that I found in the woods that I bring up when I find them. You can even place firewood underneath, and that's gonna be a huge time saver and a big money saver for you. So now after you put the logs down on top of the cardboard, then start looking for twigs and sticks, things that are gonna break down faster than the logs. Those twigs and sticks can be anywhere from about a quarter in diameter to smaller. You just break them up. When you're doing your spring cleaning, instead of throwing it on the curb or in the woods, put it in your garden if you're building a garden that year. It's gonna really help reduce the cost of soil. 
The fourth thing I put in these raised beds are leaves, which obviously we have a lot of. We've got hundreds of trees that drop every year and then pine needles too. So when I pick these things up with my lawnmower, either in the spring or the fall, they can go into your raised bed underneath the soil before you put the soil on top. Then the last thing you put in your raised bed is the soil. Of course, that's the fifth and last thing you need to put on there other than your mulch on top after you plant and start your plants for the spring. A lot of these annual crops, which most people grow in gardens, most people grow annual crops rather than perennial, these annual crops don't have a really long root system. Kind of, but not really. I picked out really big plants, whether that's a zucchini plant or tomatoes that grow really, really tall or whatever. And a lot of times the roots only go down this big. They kind of spread out this way, but they don't go down as far as you think. So to have three feet of soil or even two feet of soil, that's a lot and it's a waste because they're not using the soil at the bottom of the beds for nutrients anyway. In a few months, we're gonna be putting down about 20 more feet of garden space right here. And I'll show you exactly what I was talking about with the cardboard, logs, twigs, leaves, compost and soil. I'll do that and I'll make a video just on that topic more specifically so you can see step by step how I create a garden in an empty space like this. If you still think that getting soil is going to be expensive for you, check out this video on how you can make soil and compost for free. Don't forget to subscribe over there.